Hello and welcome to this review of the Fanatec CSL DD. Uh, I'm going to make this video, well hopefully try and make this video quite short and concise and I'll put timestamps so it'll be quite easy to jump to different parts of the videos if there's certain things you're looking for. So hopefully the video will split into sections, if not the timestamps will be in the description. And I'll also be giving a brief review of the CSL pedals as well as the CSL DD just because I bought those with it. So since they're a new product I thought I'd give them a review as well. And finally as well I'll be going over the settings I use on the CSL DD. Um, for a Cerro Corsa Competizione and the settings I use in ACC as well with this wheel because that is the same I use the most so that's the same I'll be going through for the settings and just before we get into the review I just want to add that if you are considering buying the CSL DD which I'm guessing you are if you're watching this video I have a uh, Fanatec affiliate link so I would greatly appreciate anyone that uses it I'll put that in the description and if you click on that link to go to the Fanatec website to buy whatever you want to buy um, helps me out a lot so yeah let's get straight into the video so the CSL DD is Fanatec's newest wheel and its cheapest wheel. Uh, it replaces the CSL Elite and the CSW, the club spot wheel, kind of. It's cheapest in the range and it's a direct drive, which is kind of weird because normally direct drive and cheapest don't really go uh, hand in hand. But for those that don't really know much about it, I'll just quickly go over. Basically, um, a direct drive wheel means the motor is directly attached to the wheel rim and there's no belts or cogs or anything which means obviously there's no mechanical dampening by the belts or the cogs um, there tends to be a higher dynamic range of forces by this direct drive wheel there's smoother force feedback because again there's nothing getting in the way it's just straight to your rim you get higher resolution of force feedback effects and also there's less moving parts so it's a lot more reliable and obviously there's no fans there's completely silent because it's passively cool. So yeah, so a direct drive wheel usually is the top of the range wheel. So the fact that Fanatec have brought this out for such a great price is uh, pretty incredible. So the CSL DD comes with the standard power supply, which gives it five Newton meters of torque and the boost kit 180 that you can buy for an extra price, which gives it eight Newton meters of torque. So now if we look at the CSL DD from the outside and just forget all the amazing stuff inside and the fact that it's a direct drive wheel and just ask ourselves, does it look good? Well, it's completely subjective. Some people might think so, some people might not think so. But in my opinion, I think it's not the best looking wheel. It's not very sleek. It's not very elegant looking, but the design's really clever. They designed it based on practicality. So these, what I'm gonna call like heat sinks, these protrusions, um, they're kind of heat sinks because obviously it's passively cooled. And also the wider ones act as little slots for the T-nuts if you want to side mount it. So they are very handy, so like I said, it might not be the best looking wheel, it's not bad looking by any means, but it's designed for practicality and it does that really, really well. If we look at the front of the Fanatec, it has obviously the metal plate on the front and it still has the two screw holes, or four screw holes, I think it has two at the bottom, two at the top, where normally you mount aftermarket kind of holders, either a phone holder or the M lights that you can buy. Um, so those are exactly the same width and exactly the same diameter and everything as the ones that you'd find on the CSW or the CSL Elite. So, you know, if you're upgrading from one of those to these and you have an aftermarket holder, then you can easily put it on that. So that's great from Fanatec to put those and think about that. We look at the back, the back again, very simple, just a metal back plate with the Fanatec logo and then literally all the necessary ports that you need. It has two USB-Cs, two shifter ports, a pedal port, a handbrake port, and then obviously the power socket in the center. It makes it very simple. All your cables go into the back, very easy for cable management, and it looks it looks very sleek. Moving on, uh, as you can see from this picture here, if you ignore all the disgusting lack of cable management, because uh, I have just not done any yet, I use the CSL DD on a basic JT Omega classic wheel stand. So for those that have a cheap wheel stand or perhaps want to buy the table clamp you can get with it and to use it on a desk, but are weren't sure, you know, whether that would be strong enough, then yeah, it definitely is. I've got the eight newton meter power supply, so I've got the full, full eight newton meters and you know, I don't have space for a bigger, stronger table and, and the, the GT Omega, yes, it does shake, you know, when it's under load, you know, it does shake about a bit. It's not the most sturdy, but it's completely fine. It's not unbearable. Um, it's still usable. It's completely usable. So, so definitely if, if you were unsure whether it would work with the table clamp or with a cheap stand, I mean, I wouldn't say super cheap, but something like the GT Omega Classic, then it, it, it works completely fine. 
So to attach the rim, I've got my McLaren GT3 rim here. This has the QR1 uh, light quick release. So basically you match this little slot on the top of like the shaft bit. Um, with, you'll see some bits of plastic that stick out that I was going to show to the camera, just completely missed, but you'll be able to see it. It, t it tends to be the top center of the little quick release. That basically matches it. I've got quite a weak wheel stand, obviously, so if I push, the whole stand will move. So I can just hold the back of the wheel base while I just slide it on it. And then you just turn the quick release towards the lock and it's locked and there you are, you're ready to go. But to turn it on, uh, it's very easy. You just push a, the big button on the bottom right and it'll light up with a red light. It'll do a little satisfying click and then it'll turn slightly right, slightly left and then recenter itself. If you have an Xbox for example, you can press the button again, it'll go green and that puts it into Xbox mode. If you have an Xbox compatible wheel like the McLaren GT3 wheel I've got, then now you can use it on an Xbox. If you press the button once more, it'll go yellow and this puts it in CSW 2.5 mode, which is kind of weird, but basically it replicates the CSW wheel. This is for certain, usually older games uh, that haven't been really updated yet because the CSLDD is new. So basically the driver and the software replicates the CSW so that you can still use it for those older games in CSW mode because it thinks it's that wheel, so it completely works with it. If you press the button again, it goes red and reverts back to PC mode. And to turn it off, it's very easy. You just hold the button for about three seconds and the light will go off. And there we are. Very simple, very easy, and uh, very practical. So here on the Fanatec website, if you want to order the CSLDD, this is with the boost kit. It has an estimated delivery of 30th of November, which is ridiculously uh, far away. However, I know that earlier pre-orders like myself, uh, it was meant to be in September and it came at end of August. So it could be earlier, but obviously I don't really know. Just because these were earlier doesn't mean the others will be. If you get the boost kit straight away, you get the slight discount, whereas if you buy it separately later. So keep that into consideration if you're thinking about getting the boost kit. I was not sure at first, and then I did in the end just because uh, I thought, well, I might as well get that discount for getting them together. If we scroll through the information, this just kind of tells you what the CSLDD is, a bit like what I explained, what a direct drive wheel is and everything, and a bit of marketing. And then we go down to the features. So obviously it has the boost kit 180. It tells you it's a larger 180 watt power supply instead of the 90. Improves it to eight newton meters torque. Tells you about the CSLDD, the fact that it's direct drive. All about the tuning menus that I will go through soon to show you. It's fanless, uh, passive cooling, the wireless QR technology, the t nut rail system, which is super good. And then literally all the parts that you've got on the wheel. The compatibility. Brilliantly, it works with pretty much all podium steering wheels, all club sports steering wheels, and all CSL steering wheels, all the pedals, all the shifters, all the handbrake, basically everything you can think of it works with, which is really good for the Fanatec ecosystem, really good for upgradability. One of the reasons why I choose Fanatec is the fact that you can buy different style rims and just switch them on, and it, all the shifters, well, they only have one shifter, but you know what I mean? Like, it, it's so easy with their ecosystem. Platforms, obviously, PC and Xbox works with, as I showed you with the Xbox mode. PlayStation, obviously, not yet. They're probably going to bring a PlayStation version out that will probably be about 100 euros more, because usually with the PlayStation license fee, uh, licensing fee, it, it is a bit more. And that's the end of this page. Now, if we go uh, across it to the pedals, you'll show you the CSL pedals. Uh, I would have liked to have the v3 pedals but if you're like me and you wanted to save some money you couldn't get the most expensive i'd definitely recommend the csl pedals they're the best kind of cheap and inverted commas option um they look good they feel good and they're a really good price i'm waiting for the load cell brake kit that'll make them even better but they work completely fine for for the price as well as they're pretty good to download the newest driver for the csl dd you go to downloads and you choose the csl dd boost kit even if you don't have the boost kit you go to there and then here you have the manual Fanalab software, uh, which is a really good piece of software. I won't go into detail about it. There's lots of videos out there, but I recommend having a look into it. And then finally, obviously the driver. If you click on this, uh, very easy to follow and you'll be able to download the driver. If you click on the driver on the top menu, bring you to the new Fanatec 411 driver, which you need to download also. And then once you've downloaded all that and after several PC restarts, you should have something that looks like this. You'll be able to open it, will be a little Fanatec symbol and you open it and it looks like this. <laughs> I'm putting the center due to my split screen feature annoyingly. But anyway, if you power on the wheel, it should then appear on here. And uh, yeah, and it'll look like this and you'll have the CSLDD with some of the wheel settings. And then if you go down to the steering wheel section, it'll have whatever you have connected. So for me, the McLaren GT3 wheel, 
And then the pedal section, so for me the CSL pedals. And then if you have a shifter, it will show that also. Uh, shows the club spot on me even though I don't have it. So I don't really know how it works, but really I'm just showing you that the menu is really easy to navigate, really easy to tweak everything. If you go into the tuning menu, it'll look like this. Oh, actually, wait. <laughs> no, it'll look like this. It'll be in standard mode automatically. This is just Fanatec. Don't want to scare any new customers with all the little, well, lots of scary sliders and stuff to put it very simple, but I definitely recommend putting it in advanced mode. It's very easy to use. So set two is what I use for a set of course of competizione. So if you are using that same, pause the video, have a look at these. I think this is mostly the Fanatec recommended settings. I think maybe I did a couple of tweaks here and there based on other videos I'd watched and reviews and personal feeling and stuff. For me, this works completely fine. It's really good. So I definitely recommend you take a screenshot of that or you have it open to put your settings on this if you want to use it for ACC. You can also do all this tweaking on your wheel on the go. You press a little small button, every wheel, Fanatec wheel has it and it opens up the menu on the little screen and you can navigate through the settings and literally tweak anything through here. So if you want to make adjustments while in a game, if you want to change something or you want to try something different um, just to see if it's better and then revert it if it's not and stuff, you can literally uh, do it through the wheel, which is which is really good. Now, if we go into ACC, these are the settings I use in the game. Obviously, I'm at the pedals and everything. Remember to invert them and stuff. Um, the clutch, the shifter, and then over here, you map all the buttons or your wheel and your button box if you have one. So basically, important ones are these middle ones here. So the gain I have on 70%, minimum force 0%, dynamic damping 8%, road effect 0%. Hi guys, just to pause the video right here, Ivan from the future here. Um, I'm just gonna put a screenshot here of uh, updated settings. This is, they're pretty much exactly the same, but with uh, road effects on 30%. Um, I don't know if this is any better or not. It's all about preference. I just saw several YouTubers um, and James Baldwin, uh, particularly, who also uses road effects on 30%, so I thought I'd give it a go. I still don't know which one I prefer, but just so you have a choice of two, you know, you can try them both, uh, just make two different settings and uh, see which ones you prefer, but that is another option for the setting on uh, ACC. Frequency on the highest, 333 hertz, and advanced steer lock, I've gotten 640. Now this is because I drive the Bentley in my, my league. I will put a little screenshot of um, a table for every car steel lock. If you drive a variety of cars, say you change every now and then, put it on about 920, I think that's the sweet spot for all the different cars, but I will put a little uh, screenshot that will probably be up now um, of all the different ones so you can choose for your particular car if you're using that car all the time. Steer linearity, one, brake gamma, one, gear shifter bouncing, 50, and manufacturer extras enabled. And that is uh, the settings I have for ACC. Again, works completely fine. So you love these settings. I think they work great. It can differentiate on different cars. Um, so if you don't like them, I'd suggest looking at a video for your particular car and that might help out. So let's ask ourselves, how good is the CSL DD? Well, firstly, if you ignore the disgusting fact of me having the driving line, um, on there here. I swear I don't normally use it. Uh, I just like to use it for a couple laps when I'm learning a new track and I was learning some of the British GT tracks and I forgot to turn it off while doing this recording uh, and I couldn't be bothered to redo it. But anyway, if we ignore all the fact and you just look at me driving on the wheel to see how it looks like in motion and you can also see how the rig shakes a little bit in certain areas. Um, the CSL DD, it just gives absolutely amazing detail. Um, Due to it being a direct driver wheel, you know, you can tell which type of surface you're on the road or the curbs or something, some, you know, water patches, the slippy area. You can tell about the amount of grip you have. You can tell when you're losing the car. Um, little sort of bumps, small twitches and stuff. You really feel everything, tire flex, and literally every detail you need to feel as a racing driver, you can feel through the CSL DD. It's, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't have the standard power pack for the 5 newton meters, but based on many reviews I've read and other YouTubers reviews, apparently the normal power pack, the 5 newton meters, it feels like a more detailed, smoother version of the CSL Elite with obviously no built-in dampening from cogs or, or belts or anything. But with the Boost Kit 180, I can definitely say that the CSL DD just goes to another level. It feels like a higher end direct drive wheel. Now, don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near as good as the Fanatec DD1 or the DD2 that can put all the Simicube that can put out over 20 newton meters of torque, but it feels more like a DD wheel having the full 80 newton meters. Compared to the lower power pack, there's just a larger dynamic range of forces, so the details are bigger, the loss of grip is amplified, and it makes it easier to catch slides before they can even 
before they even happen, you know. Um, if you watch some footage here that will cut to of me um, driving on Brand's Hatch, um, which is just how not to drive a branch hatch because I had a pretty terrible race here. Um, you'll see several times where I'm fighting the wheel, but it's because I can feel the car sliding, but because I can feel it early enough, I can catch the car without sliding it. Whereas on an older wheel, like an old Logitech I had, um, I would be round and spinning before I even knew it because you wouldn't get that feedback as well. So yeah, you can see several times I lose the back end, I got the power too early, I touched the grass, but I can feel that straight through the wheel and it's instant. So if you have good reactions, you can save it until I got tagged by another car and uh, ended my race. But yeah, so what would I recommend? Well, if you have the CSL Elite or an equivalent model from any other company like the Thrustmaster T300, I think, or the Logitech G29s and you want to upgrade, I'd definitely say getting the CSL DD, um, even without the boost kit. Obviously it's a bit pricier as the wheelbase itself is about the same price as the other two and the other two comes with pedals and a rim. Uh, but it's definitely worth the upgrade if you want to upgrade with or without the boost kit. Um, I would even recommend it as an upgrade to someone who has like the Thrustmaster TSPC if you get the boost kit with it because the detail from the false feedback with a direct drive wheel is well worth it. If you own the CSW 2.5 or a club sport wheel, um, it's more of a tricky situation because based on what others have said, I do believe the CSL DD with the boost kit is better than the CSW 2.5, but I haven't driven them both. I haven't driven the CS on, this, on a CSW, so I don't exactly know the difference. I can't compare them, but that's just, just based on other reviews I've read and other YouTubers' reviews. So it's not a whole lot better. So if you don't need an upgrade, then I'd say stick with the CSW 2.5 for now. If you do want the direct drive wheel, I think it's definitely worth it if you want to smash the 349 euros, 400 and something if you get the boost kit. As an entry level wheel, I'd probably still say the Logitech G29 or G920 is the best entry level wheel for people new to sim racing. For its price, it's absolutely fantastic and it's still a really competitive wheel, like people are winning. Uh, eSports championships with it. Uh, we have people in our community with even older Logitech wheels doing really well. So clearly, you know, if you're a good driver, you can be good um, on any wheel pretty much. But as an entry level, I think the G29 is still the best entry level. But if you have the cash to spend and you want to spend a few hundred more than the Logitech, I think getting like the setup I have, the CSL DD, the McLaren GT3 wheel, or if you want a round wheel, the WRC wheel with the CSL pedals, it's quite a bit better than the Logitech um, for about 200 and something euros more. And then if you get the boost kit, it'll make it about double the price. I think I spent about 600 and something euros instead of what would be 300 and something for the Logitechs. So if you do have the money, it still can be used as an entry wheel, definitely. It's a very good entry wheel. <laughs> it's because it's more like a mid-level wheel, even though it's in Final Tech's like entry price. Yeah, I'd still say the Logitech is best if you're going straight into sim racing and you've never used a wheel before, but you have time to practice a lot and you want a really good entry wheel, um, the Fanatec CSL DD is definitely there because it's more like a mid-tier wheel. Overall, the CSL DD is just an amazing wheel and it's just even better with the boost kit. Um, the only negatives, which is also a positive of it, is probably the price. The negative being the same price as other entry level in quotation marks wheels you don't get rims or pedals with it then the positive that is it's a direct drive wheel that costs 349 euros whereas all the other direct drive wheels are in the thousands so price is a bit of both uh, the only negative i've ever seen i don't have one so i can't confirm this but this is based on other reviews from other uh, legit youtubers and other things i've read is the club sport quick release the qr1 club sport it doesn't really fit quite snug without having the safety pin installed, uh, which makes it a bit less of a quick release because you need an Allen key to put it in and remove. That's the only negative I've really seen of everything else about it has been really positive. So overall, I definitely recommend the CSL DD if you're looking for a, a mid-level wheel, because I think that's what it is, uh, because there's nothing that comes near to it. You know, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Obviously, like I said, if you have the CSW 2.5 and you want to upgrade, there is rumor of a CSW or a Club Sport DD wheel coming out, but there are just rumors at the moment. So if you want to wait and you don't need an upgrade right now, I'd say wait for that. But if you really want this direct drive wheel, it's definitely worth it. The CSL pedals, they're absolutely great for entry level pedals. I think once the load cell kit comes and the metal face plates to make it a bit less plasticky, I think they'll be slightly better. But for the 79 euros or 80 euros roughly um, 
they're absolutely brilliant pedals, they're really good, and the Lord Cell kit I think will just make them even better. And I think they go hand in hand with the CSL DD, they're really solid pedals to go with it for them, which is why they're both in the CSL class, they're both really good. So I really hope you liked the review, and remember if you are going to get the CSL DD or any Fanatec to use the affiliate link below, I'll really appreciate it. And also, if you're new to this channel and you do a lot of sim racing, come join our community. I'll put a link below to the website and how you join our racing community and our racing leagues. We're always open to having more and more members. And obviously, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I really hope you like the review. Thank you so much for watching.